All right, well, it's noon and we'd like to get started on our info session for the Master of Science in Applied Geosciences. Um, my name is Dr. Yvette Bordeaux and I'm the director of the Master of Science in Applied Geosciences here at the University of Pennsylvania. And I'm gonna uh, take you through uh, the program, the curriculum, the requirements for the program, uh, outcomes from our graduates and so forth. Uh, but if at any time you have a question, please feel free to unmute your microphone or type in the chat room. Also, Sally Cardi is here today and she, as I talk about different things, she'll be putting links into the chat room that you can use um, to, to learn more um, as we only have so much time to talk about them. All right, so I am going to get started and I know there's a lot of people that signed up. So I imagine we'll see more people as, as we get going here. All right. Okay, so the uh, Master of Science in Applied Geosciences program was started at the University of Pennsylvania in 2005. And uh, we have over 100 alumni from the program and they have been terrific um, in terms of helping our students find positions, internships, research projects, and so forth. So really tight knit, awesome alumni. We are um, in the University of Pennsylvania, which has 12 schools. We are part of the School of Arts and Sciences. And we are uh, within the arts and sciences, we have three colleges and we're part of the College of Liberal and Professional Studies. Um, that's where they house um, all of the professional master's programs. Um, we are also academically housed in the Department of Earth and Environmental Science. So although the College of Liberal and Professional Studies takes care of uh, um, our admissions process um, in terms of collecting information for your scores and your transcripts and so forth, uh, the Department of Earth and Environmental Science oversees the curriculum. And this is basically your academic home while you're at Penn. So here's a picture of it. Um, this is actually where we are today in the um, Hayden Hall. And um, so now uh, this is a professional master's program and how is that different from a research master's? Uh, basically we are focused on helping you find a job after graduation. Uh, we do a lot of extra professional development and um, we make connections with industry for you um, and we try to help you find those positions that you're looking for. Doesn't mean you can't go on for a PhD either immediately after our program or two, three, even five years later totally fine. Um, we're not against that. Uh, but we do focus mainly on trying to help you find a job immediately after graduation. Um, our program areas that uh, a lot of our students go into remediation, um, water quality and engineering geology. Okay. Now, why study geology in Philadelphia? I feel like yeah, if you're going to study geology, you should go to, I don't know, Colorado, Texas? Well, it turns out that Philadelphia has a lot of great opportunities um, if you're interested in remediation, um, engineering, geology, um, hydrology, that sort of thing. And so um, we actually have a lot of different uh, programs in, uh, here. There's a couple of them. The water department here in Philadelphia is committed to green infrastructure that's using um, stormwater management practices, using uh, green roofs, um, uh, rain gardens, swales, cisterns, all sorts of different green ways to control stormwater runoff rather than gray, which is just pipes and vats. So with that, um, there's a lot of opportunities to learn about green infrastructure firsthand to help with implementation, design, um, and also to uh, look at these systems after they've been put in place to see if they're being effective. EPA Region 3 headquarters is in Philadelphia and there's a lot of connections that we've made with them and there's opportunities to go and work and do um, internships and potentially pathways positions into the um, internship pathways positions uh, which lead to, posi to jobs. So um, lots of opportunities with them. We also, uh, as you may realize, there's a lot of cleanup work that's being done in New Jersey and Philadelphia. So if you're interested in remediation, this is a great place to work. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, at Penn itself, we have a lot of green infrastructure pro programs um, in place. Um, here are two pictures. One is of Penn Park, which is a major stormwater um, control area. It um, basically takes uh, stormwater from Franklin Field, which is the football stadium, and uh, collects it over underneath the uh, fields. 
and Shoemaker Green, which is a ma major um, stormwater project that uh, clears water from the Palestra as well as other buildings in the area. So these are two big projects that are ongoing. Our students have been um, monitoring them for water quality and effective, uh, how effective they are. And so you can get involved with those projects. And Sally's already putting some links into the, uh, um, into the chat room if you're interested in any of these items. Another huge um, connection that we have is with the Water Center at Penn. The Water Center at Penn is actually housed in the Department of Earth Environmental Science where we are. And um, with that center, you can work with faculty and outside groups to do projects in water policy, hydrology, water infrastructure. Um, we uh, have had in just the last two months, um, six students funded to do projects um, related to water. Uh, that were com um, coming out of the water center. So they're constantly sending us um, projects that are funded. Uh, they were just funded for a very large $400,000 project. Um, and they need students to work on these projects with faculty mentors. So um, really great opportunities there. They also hold a number of seminars and conferences, um, which uh, can help you learn more and to network. Our faculty um, here at Penn uh, is a combination of research and practicing professionals. So we have our research faculty who study soils, climate change, mechanics of ice and sediment transport, but we also have professional faculty who work in industry. They're working all day long in the field and then they're coming in at night to teach. So they're bringing those real world examples into the classroom. Um, saying, hey, today I was drilling and we ran into this type of rock and it collapsed and this is why. And so it's a, it's a really great opportunity to learn firsthand about the types of things that are happening um, in the field right now. Um, they also have industry connections, which is great uh, for students looking for jobs. We, uh, most of our instructors and the professional faculty hold either a PG, a professional geologist license or a professional um, engineering license or both. Okay. Um, our curriculum is 12 courses. It's a 12 CU program. It's uh, equivalent to 36 semester hours. And you can complete the program very comfortably in two years full time or three years part time. Um, there are ways to shorten that um, if you want to take summer classes. Uh, we encourage you to take the full two years so you get the most out of the program. But um, uh, there are ways to shorten it if you need to. So uh, there are seven required courses which expand your base knowledge of geology and there are two professional skills courses and three electives. So we'll go through those. And these are all pictures that I have been putting up of, of various faculty and students in the field. Um, this is a field project right across the street, um, bailing a well. Um, so your required courses include uh, geocomputations, which is a calculus refresher course. If you are very strong in calculus already, um, there are options to take geostatistics or geographic information systems as a replacement for that course. Um, intro to hydrology, groundwater hydro, geomechanics, you have the options of either solids or fluids or both if you want. Um, we have a geophysics course, a geochemistry course. Geochemistry, you can take hard rock geochemistry, water chemistry, which is aqueous geochemistry, or air chemistry. So you have three options for your geochemistry and it depends on what you want to do in the field. Um, and then we recommend which course to take. Engineering geology, you have three options. There's a structural course for environmental professionals. There's a, a soil mechanics course, and there's a, a hard rock course. So again, um, depending on what you want to do uh, professionally, you would take one of these three courses and you are actually assigned an academic advisor when you start the program and they work with you to select the right courses that make the most sense for you. Um, there's also two professional uh, courses that you are required to take. One is project management. We have an external advisory board of professionals in the field who have recommended that project management is something that you need as a uh, someone who's going into environmental consulting. If you want to move up in the organization, having those skills is very important. And so um, we now have a, a project management course that you can take here. And also project design. Now project design is where you design your thesis project. So you come up with your question, um, you create your method, you 
determine your methodology, you find your advisors, which will be your committee, um, and you write your proposal. And you also can request funding at that point too. So the whole course is, um, is centered around finding that project that you'll do for the following year. So unlike some master's programs where you're expected to come in already knowing what you want to do, already have an advisor in place, we actually encourage the opposite. We actually come in, come in with an open mind, take some classes, get to meet all the professors, learn about all the projects that are available to you here at Penn. And then in the second semester of your program, that's when you choose your project and develop your methodologies and your committee. So that's a little bit different than many research master's programs where they really do want you to be all ready to go when you show up. There's also three electives that are required for the program, and these will be based on which concentration you choose. Um, when you apply to the program, you have to choose one. You can change. So say you come in and you chose environmental geology, and as you get through the program, you realize engineering geology is really your your passion, um, you can change. So up to uh, the end of the first year, you can change uh, which one you want to do. And um, and then we select your electives based on that concentration. Again, you have an academic advisor that is assigned to you when you start the program, and they are with you every semester, helping you select courses and making sure you stay on track for, um, for graduation. Uh, occasionally, they also serve uh, on your committee for your thesis, um, but uh, they don't have to. They're just there to help make sure that you get the, the right courses in the right sequence so that you graduate on time. Um, so each of these uh, concentrations I'll go through. So the first one is environmental geology. This is probably our most popular concentration. Uh, a lot of our students who do this uh, concentration go on for environmental consulting positions. And um, some of the courses that you can choose from for that concentration, again, you get to choose three. So there's a lot of options here. Um, you can do uh, GIS. There's both raster and vector GIS. There's wetlands, um, statistical analysis, fundamentals of air pollution, aqueous geochemistry, soil science, and more. So um, lots to choose from there. If you choose engineering geology, some of the courses, again, you'll see some duplicates here, but uh, soil science, again, is an option, earth systems and earth hazards, geostat, um, geomechanics fluids, engineering geology, rock mechanics, superficial materials and processes, and so on. So there's a number of courses to choose from for each concentration. Again, what, which courses you choose will depend on your background, what you had as an undergrad, your experience that you may have in uh, positions that you've held and in internships and so forth, and also your goals, like where do you want to end up um, for your career. Hydrogeology is our third concentration, and um, there you would choose from aqueous geochemistry, our fate and transport of pollutants course, which is a modeling class, environmental groundwater, geochemical modeling, geomechanics fluids, and wetlands. Now, um, beyond the 12 courses that you're required to take, as you've noticed, there's also this thesis, thesis project there. It's called Project Design here. And um, it's an applied research project. And so we want to see you actually sort of try to solve a problem. So there's some issue, um, and it could be many different things. Um, but it's basically to show off your skills, what you've learned in the program, and um, something that you could potentially take to a job interview with you to show your abilities. So that if you're in groundwater, maybe that's a modeling project. Um, if you're in environmental geology, um, it could be a number of different things. Um, such as uh, uh, looking at a remediation project that's been done, um, maybe an infrastructure, green infrastructure project, um, and that analyzing it. Um, it could be a lab-based, uh, field-based, or a literature-based study. So again, that would de depend on you know where you want to go, what your goals are, um, and uh, uh, what kinds of positions you would like, and again, what your background is, and and, and what we can uh, get you to do. So. Um, I will think uh, some examples of recent uh, project design projects. Um, one student looked at uh, uh, an investigation of Route 33 sinkhole. Uh, it was a road project that uh, continuously, the sinkhole was continuously opening up. So they studied that and how they might be able to help remediate that problem. Uh, another student who was working in Europe um, did a landslide occurrence in Italy and trying to figure out how we can um, predict those in the future. 
to save lives. And there was a characterization of a previously unmapped subsurface fault in uh, New Jersey. That was an engineering um, geology project uh, where they knew there was a fault there and it was very difficult to figure out where and they used geophysics to figure that out. So there are lots of different options. Um, so beyond your uh, curriculum, so that's your 12 courses, there's additional um, events that we provide for you. And these are what we call our professional development um, events. So those include the first year retreat. And um, this is held before you start the program. So uh, usually the week before classes start, we all get all of our new students together in one place. And um, we give you a lot of, of uh, great information, resources that are available to you at Penn. Um, you'll, hear, you'll meet your advisors in person. They'll have talked to you over the summer, uh, but they will also um, be meeting you in person there, um, going over your final uh, plan, because um, over the summer they'll be meeting with you either virtually or in person, on the phone, whatever works for you and uh, creating an academic plan. And then when they meet with you at the first year retreat, they'll go over that plan and make sure everything's in place. Um, but we'll also have networking skills, um, opportunities, um, hear from current students about their experiences in the program, and also, again, pen resources. About a month later, we hold a second retreat because that first retreat's a little overwhelming. There's a lot of information given to you in a very short period of time. It's a one day event. Um, so in the second retreat, we start talking about research opportunities, finding the perfect job or internship, depending on where you are in your program and things like negotiating salaries. We have career services come in and talk about that. Um, and we also have alumni uh, come at the end for the happy hour so you can meet some of them and uh, do some networking there as well. So these are, again, professional development. You hear from current students. You hear from alumni about their experiences and what they're doing now. And um, it's a really great opportunity to just uh, network. We also hold an alumni panel. It's actually tonight. Um, and the alumni panel is hosted by our graduate advisory board. So these are our student government and there are representatives from our two master's programs in our department. We have the Master of Science in Applied Geosciences and we have the Master of Environmental Studies. And the two programs have student representatives and these student representatives invite alumni to come and talk about the program, their experience in the program, what they're doing now, and uh, lessons learned, what I would have done differently, uh, what were the courses that helped the most in their career, etc. So um, the alumni or the, the graduate advisory board students ask questions of the alumni panel and then of course the uh, group, the students can ask questions as well. Afterwards there's a happy hour and we invite all of our alumni to come to that, not just the ones on the panel, but anyone who wants to come. And so that's a great networking event as well. Um, other professional development opportunities that we give to our students, we actually sponsor OSHA 40 hour HAZWOPR training certification. Um, we have it set up so that the students do 32 hours online. All right, and then we have an eight hour dress out. You can see here students in our classroom upstairs um, doing the eight hour uh, you have to put on a whole hazmat outfit, you have to learn how to use a respirator, um, and at the end you're ready to take the quiz or the, the test to be certified for OSHA uh, 40 hour. Um, this is a certification that is required by most environmental consulting companies. If you do not have the certification, you cannot go out in the field. And if they hire you, they're going to have to send you off for this training for the first week of your job. Um, so they basically lose you for a week after they hire you. So if you already have that on your resume, it makes you more hireable than someone who looks exactly like you but does not have the certification. Also, students who want to do internships over the summer are not allowed to go out in the field unless they have the certification and the company will not pay for you to go out in the field, pay for you to do this training and then go out in the field because they're basically only have you for six weeks and they're not going to spend the first five week or first week of the six weeks um, with you in training. So 
um, students who have gotten this certification said that they were allowed to go out in the field with the geologists, whereas the uh, their counterparts were kept in the office doing paperwork the entire time. So they got a much better experience out of their internship because of this certification. Um, we subsidize it very heavily. It does not cost you as a student very much to do it, um, much less than if you'd done it on your own. Um, we do this every spring so that you're ready for summer internships. <laughs> Um, we also provide specific courses that students may have missed in undergrad uh, so that they are eligible for um, the professional licensure. Um, in most states in the country, not all, um, you do have to have a professional geologist license in order to do certain projects. And um, in order to get that license, there's a certain number of things you have to do. First, you have to take a fundamentals of geology exam. And in order to sit for that exam in different states, uh, you have to have different qualifications. And so in Pennsylvania, in order to sit for that exam, you have to have a structural geology course on your transcript and you have to have a geology field course on your transcripts. So for one, whatever reason you missed one of those courses as an undergrad, we do provide them here. And these have been approved by the state of Pennsylvania as uh, meeting the requirements. And then our students can sit for the exam. That's step one. Step two, you become a geologist in training. And then over the course of many years, um, you get experience. And so once you have accumulated five years of experience working with a professional geologist, you can then sit for the final professional geologist licensure exam. Um, the, master's program actually reduces that requirement to four years. So if you complete your master's program with us, you only have to work under professional geologist for four years. If you did an internship over the summer and you worked with a professional geologist, they can sign off on that, give you a, a signature on uh, uh, the form, and that can count towards the hours that you need to sit for that final exam. So uh, as soon as we encourage students to get that um, fundamentals of geology exam under their belt very quickly so that they can then start accumulating hours towards the, their ability to get the license. Okay, and so again, not every state requires it. New York does, Pennsylvania does, Delaware does, New Jersey does not. Um, other states around the union, some do and some don't. Certainly in other countries, they don't require it. But what we found is that students who do have this licensure um, can make more money, um, can bill out at a higher level uh, for their company. And so they're actually quite, um, it's quite nice for them to have that. All right, so we do provide these courses for that reason. Um, in terms of uh, field courses, we provide uh, geologic field methods for our students. Again, this is uh, one of the required courses that they're looking for for, for the um, fundamentals of geology exam. Um, we have advanced methods, we have soils classes, we have biogeochemistry methods, and we have wetlands courses, and all of these have su uh, substantial field components to them. Okay. Now, in terms of careers, where do our students go after they get their degree? Um, it turns out that um, uh, these are a few of the companies where our, our alumni now work. As I said, we have over 100 alumni, many different companies. Um, they work for both uh, consulting firms, the U.S. government, um, and internationally. We have students in many countries now who work for their uh, various U uh, geological surveys and so forth. Um, this picture is actually from our students uh, at the All Ivy Environmental Career Fair. This is a career fair that's held every year at Columbia University in New York City. And uh, we charter a bus and take our students up there for free. And they have the day to go around to all of the tables and look for internships and jobs. Um, it, the, uh, the career fair is limited to only students of Ivy League universities or alumni of Ivy League universities. And so <clears throat> it's somewhat, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> limited in terms of how many students can come because of that. And um, it gives you an opportunity to, to talk to a lot of different um, companies to see what they're looking for and what they do. Um, Sally just put in the chat room the link to that and you can see the list of, of recruiters that come to that. A lot of environmental consulting companies come to that, including the, the last one on this list is Rue. Um, one of our alumni is usually manning the table at, at that conference. So she's really great about hiring our students. We've had a number of students hired on the spot. 
um, where they said, oh, I just got hired uh, by Rue, and uh, they told me I can start in July, which is, you know, fantastic. The the career fair is in March, and um, they, they the companies are willing to wait for you to finish your degree and then start with them. So... The program also has a number of dual degrees, and um, to, uh, one of them is uh, with the Master of Law. So you can actually get this uh, additional master's degree while you're working on your applied geosciences degree. And this can be very helpful if you are um, thinking about uh, going into regulation um, or policy. Um, having that additional credential can be very useful. So you're not going to be a lawyer at the end, but you'll know a lot about the law. Uh, we also have an international environmental management um, degree. This is actually a triple master's degree. You get the Master of Science of Applied Geosciences from the University of Pennsylvania. You receive a post-master's degree in environmental management from Mean Paris Tech uh, in France. And um, you receive a Master of Environmental Engineering from Tsinghua University in Beijing, China. So those three, uh, you go, uh, you start here at Penn, you do two semesters with us, you go to uh, China for three months, and then you go to France for four months, and then you do a six month internship, you write that internship up as a thesis um, for all three schools, you have to defend in China for that program and you have to write it up for us and get it approved by our committee here um, and then you'll receive the three degrees so that's a fantastic opportunity if you have the time to you know move around the world and see how um, environmental management is handled in different parts of the world so Europe Asia and the US In terms of certificates, uh, you can also pick up a certificate while you're here if, if uh, just the degree is not enough. You can also get certificates in Geographic Information Systems or GIS. Um, there's a, a certificate in resilience if you're interested in resilience and adaptation as, as cities start to adjust to climate change. Um, we, there's also a certificate in energy policy if you're interested in energy. Um, and the law school has a law certificate if you don't want to do a full law degree. All right, so um, next I wanted to talk a little bit about some of our student groups and what they're up to. Um, again, I mentioned our graduate advisory board earlier who hosts that alumni panel. Um, they also host our coffee hours, um, which includes coffee and donuts right before class. Um, they host uh, all student meetings where students get together and talk about the programs and how they would like to see changes or what they, additional things they'd like to see. And they bring uh, the graduate advisory board members bring those to us and then we try to address them as best we can. Um, they also uh, host happy hours and various um, activities like ice skating or rock climbing depending on what the students want. We have a student chapter of the Association of Environmental and Engineering Geologists that you can join. There are regional student nights where you can go and present posters, um, have dinner with environmental professionals. It's a great way to network and also as you're looking for a job. If you already have a job and you're just looking to network with some other geologists, this is a great opportunity. Um, and uh, this group also has a, um, a study group uh, where they're working for to, to study for the fundamentals of geology exam for the licensure. We also have a student chapter of the American Waterworks Association and this group is um, has this uh, organization has a lot of opportunities for students to go to and attend conferences, um, networking events, there are scholarships available through them. Uh, so really a great group to um, get involved with. Uh, we have uh, within our department and it's now housed within the uh, the water center, we have the WH2O Journal of Gender and Water. This is a um, online journal that is published once a year and people from all over the world submit um, articles related to gender and water and you as a student can get involved with this and become an editor. You can write blogs, you can write articles for it, you can help with the layout and design of the journal. Um, so there's a lot of ways to get involved. It's another nice thing to put onto your resume uh, that you were an editor for a journal, um, especially if you're thinking maybe PhD down the road. It's a really good one to get involved with. Again, Sally's putting all of these uh, links to these things in the uh, chat room, so you can check that out. 
Some of our students do get involved with extracurricular activities, not necessarily immediately related to coursework and to their research, um, but they're also involved with um, things like, uh, we have a, a big uh, issue with intractable problems in West Virginia. Um, this, uh, this is a problem where uh, there are people in West Virginia without running water or clean running water and this, the towns are small, have no money and need help to figure out how to get clean running water to the homes. Um, there's uh, the EPA Rainworks Challenge and this is where uh, students design, it's a design challenge, design a, a way to control stormwater runoff somewhere on the campus um, and then they present that to the EPA. Uh, for a cash prize. Um, there's the Patagonia case competition where students from our program work with students from Wharton School of Business and School of Design um, to uh, come up with a solution to some sort of, of, of um, question or a problem that Patagonia uh, poses each year. Um, last year's group actually got uh, third place. They were invited to come to California and present. Um, so they had a really good time. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities for you to do extras beyond just uh, your regular coursework. Now, um, in terms of opportunities, you can do research with a, a number of uh, faculty here in the department or throughout the university, but you also have the opportunity to work with um, organizations outside of Penn, um, but that are local to the area. So uh, places like Stroudwater Research Center, the Northern Research Station for the U.S. Forest Service is right here in Philadelphia. They do a lot of urban projects, urban street trees, stormwater management, uh, micro watershed work, repairing restoration, and so forth. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, they're the ones to talk to. We have alumni that work there um, and it's a great opportunity to get involved with hands-on research. Takuni Takoni Frankford Watershed Partnership is another um, group that um, has research uh, opportunities or um, practical um, experience available. <laughs> Publishing, we always encourage our students to publish either independent study projects they're doing, their final project design, their thesis, um, extra projects they're doing. We're always interested in doing that. No requirement that you publish, but it does look good on the resume, and especially if you're uh, applying for a PhD program eventually. And you can collaborate with faculty at Penn um, and some of these outside organizations. Stroudwater Research Center in particular is always interested in publishing their work. Uh, we just had a student uh, last week that published a, an article uh, with one of our faculty here in the department. So definitely an opportunity. Uh, we encourage our students to attend conferences and uh, present or at least attend the conferences to learn more about their field and to network. We also have some classes that go um, uh, they're like trip classes. So one goes to the World Water Week, which is held in Stockholm, Sweden. We have another one that attends the World Water Forum. That's actually held every three years in a different country. Um, the upcoming one will be in Senegal in spring of 2021. So we will be sending a class there. We just had a class go to India um, for the uh, World, um, the Global Water Initiative um, uh, um, conference in Kolkata. And um, we also encourage students to go to other conferences like the Geological Society of America or the Association of Environmental and Engineering Geologists and again, either present or attend talks. Internships, um, almost all of our students do get an internship if they don't already have a job. And um, again, uh, the Haswapper certification helps with getting those positions. Um, we have a lot of alumni contacts that you can talk to about getting positions. Um, and so there's um, local consulting firms, the EPA, Urban Research Station, Delaware River Basin Commission, and even the Craig actually, uh, it's this picture of Craig Pizak here. He actually um, obtained a, a position out in um, Arizona. So uh, it doesn't have to be in the Philly area. We have contacts all over um, and students have done um, internships all over the world. Again, we really encourage you to attend events like the All Ivy Environmental Career Fair, but we also encourage you to attend um, the Graduate Research Conference. And in your second year, you'll actually be presenting at the Graduate Research Conference. So this is something we host every year. 
and we uh, the students who are graduating have a poster and they present at this poster conference um, it is open to the public and we invite you if you're interested in our program and would like to learn more this is a great opportunity to meet our graduating students who are presenting their research um, meet faculty who will be there meet the current students who haven't uh, completed their research yet but will be attending. Um, we have a guest speaker this year, it's Kathy Klein um, from the Partnership for the Delaware Estuary. Um, we have, so we'll have the poster presentations, we will have um, Kathy speaking, and then there will be a happy hour. So alumni attend this, staff, students, uh, faculty. Um, so it's a really great opportunity if you're thinking about coming to Penn and you just want to learn a little bit more. It's March 27th this year at um, uh, three o'clock and um, Sally has just put the flyer, the PDF flyer in the chat room so you can click on that and uh, RSVP um, It's free of charge. All right now um, I don't know if anyone has any questions again you're you're welcome to unmute your microphone at any point and ask a question or type a question in the chat room. Uh, but I'll just keep going until I hear from anybody. Um, a little bit about our program stats. We currently have 48 active students in the program. That means that they're taking classes this semester. Uh, occasionally we have a student who takes a semester off either for uh, career, you know, things are getting busy at work or uh, maybe um, personal reasons, um, but at the moment we have 48 active students taking classes. 30 of them are part-time and 18 are full-time. And you can see here the difference between a part-time and a full-time. Part-time is one to two classes in a semester, full-time is three to four. The program is designed so that you can actually work full-time and take all of your courses at night and complete the program in about, you can do it in uh, Ideally, three years is ideal. You could do it in two years if you wanted to take summer classes. Um, our students, uh, like I said, all of our classes are at night. You can take classes during the day. If you're a full-time student, you want to take day classes, totally fine, but you can complete the entire program while working full-time. Um, some students are like, well, if I'm full-time and I, and I, you know, what do I do during the day if all the classes are at night? This is an opportunity for you to get involved with those extracurricular activities, um, internships. A lot of our students have internships during the semester, often they're paid. Um, research with the faculty in their labs. There's plenty to do during the day. Um, our students tend to get overwhelmed with how much there is to do. So uh, you will definitely find, find things to do in the daytime. Um, international students, we have about 17% of our students are international and they come from these countries currently. Um, the MSAG program is a STEM program for international students, which means that you get additional time to work in the U.S. after you graduate. Um, and we have both curriculum practical training which and op optional practical training available for our students. Um, that means that while you're here, you can work um, uh, in paid positions. Um, both uh, if, if you're on campus during the semester, if you're off cam uh, in the summertime, you can work off campus um, and then you can work in the country for the additional time, extra time um, after you graduate, full paid positions. Now, typical majors for um, our uh, applicants. Generally, our students are coming into the program with geology backgrounds or environmental studies or science, engineering, physics, math, occasionally chemistry. Um, or if you've had some experience in a geoscience field. We've had a few folks with some unusual backgrounds, but they've been working in consulting for some time. And so they have that experience that helps them out with that. So um, generally it would be great if you have some geology background because we do jump right in. But if you don't, we can help you with some courses that can help catch you up um, to where everyone else is. Um, we're very pleased to say that in the last three years, we've had 100% employment in the geosciences fields for our alum. So as they're graduating, many of our students are actually getting positions before they graduate. So they come in, uh, do a year, get that HAZWOPER training, do an internship over the summer, and typically get hired for the fall. So um, most of our students are getting positions within that first year of the program. Some of our students are coming in already with a position and that and but they often then move to a new position after they graduate. So um, 
there's uh, been, we've been very successful in finding positions for our students. It takes a little time and a little effort on your part. You have to network and meet all of our alum and talk to folks, um, but there's a lot of opportunities out there. All right, so next steps. If you're interested in starting in the fall semester, which is late August, um, this year it's September 1st, um, the application deadline is April 1st. Uh, if you uh, want to put it off a little bit, we actually have a spring intake. That means classes start in January and you can start then. Um, the application deadline for that is November 1st. Application requirements. Um, there's an online application that you must fill out. We do not have a paper application, but you can go online. And I think Sally just, yep, she just put that into the uh, chat room. And there are three essays, uh, basically, how did you become interested in geology or what is your focus area in geology? What would you like to do while you're here in the program? And then what would you like to do with the degree when you um, are done, when you graduate? So those are carefully laid out. They're much more detailed than that. Um, but that's sort of the gist of what those questions are. And those are very important as part of the applications. Uh, the faculty committee that reviews the applications really wants to see um, uh, that you have an understanding of our program and that we can provide you with the coursework and the research that you need to, to reach your goals, okay? Um, we need official transcripts from all universities and um, colleges if they were outside of the US. Um, they do have to be evaluated by an outside organization like WES. Um, if you attended only US um, schools, you can actually submit unofficial transcripts, but if you're admitted, then you have to uh, um, submit the official transcripts. Um, a, a resume is required. Um, if your f native language is not English, we require the TOEFL score um, or the IELTS, which is just an English language proficiency exams. If your native language is English, don't worry about that. Two letters of recommendation. These can be from professors or uh, internship supervisors, or if you've been out of school for a while, current supervisors and colleagues in your company are totally fine. Um, and there's no requirement for a GRE. Um, and that's it. There is an application fee. I didn't skip that. Um, so yeah. Okay, in terms of funding your education, um, we do not have uh, research assistantships or traditional teaching assistantships within the program. However, um, a lot of our students pay for their uh, program through subsidized student loans. Um, a lot of companies have tuition benefits. So some students are working for various companies, including the University of Pennsylvania. They have tuition benefits and you can um, use those towards the program. Um, some of our students uh, have external scholarships from their, uh, if they're from another country, they may have it from their government. Um, they may have it from like in the US, maybe from NSF or other places. We actually have a list um, that we send to new admits of uh, places where they can apply for scholarships outside of Penn. Uh, we do have TA positions, but they are semester to semester and they're just a flat rate. They do not cover tuition. So you're paid a thousand dollars a semester um, to be a TA. Those positions are given out each semester. And so you're not guaranteed um, that if you get it in the fall that you would get it in the spring as well. Uh, we do have funding for technical paper presentations. So if you present a poster or an oral presentation at a conference, we can help you with costs of attending the conference. We have travel subvention awards. So if you're traveling for a trip course or to a conference, we can help you with that. And we can also help with funding for research materials for your, uh, for your thesis. So um, those things we can help with, it's just the, uh, we don't have a solid, uh, funding stream for uh, tuition. Okay. All right. Are there any questions? It's a lot of material in a very short period of time. Again, you can unmute your microphone and ask a question um, or you can type in the chat room and then you can find the chat room by clicking down at the bottom. Yes, uh, Cyprian, you had a question? Yeah, um, hello, good, good, Hi. good afternoon. Hi, okay, so um, I, although I came in late, um, 
during the presentation, I also had the opportunity to get quite a handful of information I needed. My so, question is um, regarding the, okay, what's, what's the basis of um, assessing the transcripts? What's like, is there, is, is, is there a certain GPA you need? I see, as a yeah, school, right. as a school set a certain GPA yeah. needed for admission right. into the master's program. Right. Um, like general, generally, we'd like to see a 3.0 or higher. Um, that's on the 4.0 scale. So if your scale is a little bit different, you would have to adjust it for that. But um, generally, they want to see a 3.0 or higher. Occasionally, they will admit a student uh, with a slightly lower GPA, like if you're very close, but not quite 3.0. Um, and it, it depends on, you know, if you had um, uh, some explanation for it, like say freshman year, you had a hard time adjusting to the new school or, or something like that. Okay. okay. Then um, regarding the funding, um, okay, graduate school in the U.S. can be really expensive. Right. And um, the Pens and Pennsylvania, University of Pennsylvania being an Ivy League college, um, it's quite, I'm very sure it's quite on the high side too. Mm -hmm. So, um, you talked about um, the tuition waivers, not um, the, the university not having a strong tuition waiver option or something. I, I didn't really get that. Oh, so some, some programs have a TA position where it includes covering uh, tuition as well as paying you a stipend. Um, our, our TA positions, teaching assistant positions, um, just give you a stipend. There's no tuition coverage. <laughs> Okay. So you would still so, have to pay for your courses, um, but you would get a thousand dollars a month uh, for being a teaching assistant. So um, okay, so um, the the payment plan, how how is it? Is it do we have an instrumental payment per semester, or we, it's mm -hmm. a once uh, is an outright payment you pay once and for all per semester? How 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 is the payment plan for tuition? Right, so you can set up a payment plan with Penn. Um, there's a couple of different options. One is a monthly payment plan, um, and it's from semester to semester. So you basically, you sign up for your classes, you're billed, and then they divide it over the number of months that you're paying. So depending on whether you're doing it over four months, five months, you'll, they'll set up a plan for you. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we did record this and we will be uh, sending it out to everyone. So if you did miss the beginning, um, you'll be able to see the recording. Okay. Yeah. And if anybody has any other questions, where uh, you can type in the chat room. You can find the chat room by clicking down towards the bottom of your screen. There should be a little symbol for the chat. And um, you'll see in there tons of links that Sally put in while I was talking um, to uh, get more information about anything that you heard about. And again, uh, we did record this. We'll be sending it out to you. And those links will be available in the recording as well. OK, so sorry. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. OK, OK, um, one more question. So. Um, how is the, um, okay? You 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 the 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 courses the concentrations for geoscience at the university covered um, environmental geology. Um, I think mm -hmm. environmental um, geology. Environmental geology. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, I, I didn't hydro really call everything hydrogeology. Okay, so yeah. it's more like environment. Um, how is the petroleum? aspects of geology like in, at the University of Pennsylvania? Yeah, we do not do petroleum geology. So that is one way to not get admitted is if you say you want to do petroleum geology, um, that is not our focus at all. We definitely okay. are looking at environmental engineering and hydro, and it's mostly focused on remediation. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so cleaning up, cleaning up afterwards. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Contamination, we do that. <laughs> okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so okay so um if if i okay um everything the, the the how if i want to start now if i want to if i want to um start my application i just um you, you mentioned ways we, we could we could send our transcript via ways right or um, right. directly from the university from my university because i studied at the university of lagos nigeria mm -hmm. and um um our the gp system and this university at the universities um a 5.0 scale, mm -hmm. so right. meaning I would have to send through ways, right? Yeah, yes, you would. Or um, I can also send directly from my university. Is that also an option? 
So um, when you apply to the program, there's an option to separately send it to Wes and they'll evaluate it. Or within the application itself, there's another group that you can do it with and you can just click a button and it will send your transcripts off to this company and they will do the evaluation. So you can either do Wes or this other one. I forget what the name of it is. Okay. Um, but then yeah. If my first language is English, do I still need to tell me, um, send a test score, my English test scores? Nope. Okay. Right. No. That'll be all. Thank yeah. you. Yep, no problem. Yeah, we've had several students uh, from, from your university, so, yep. Okay, well, I'll be here for a few more minutes if anyone has additional questions, but otherwise, thank you so much for coming today and listening to the presentation. And again, if you have any questions, please do uh, reach out to us. Um, we're happy to meet with you, talk to you on the phone if you have additional questions that are specific to you. Um, we're also happy to host you if you want to come to campus for a visit. Um, the Graduate Research Conference is a great way to learn more um, about the program because, again, everyone's there, right? Our students, our alumni, our, our staff, our faculty, um, they're all there. So it's a really great, we had over 120 people there last year. So it was just amazing. Um, and we also, I forgot, we also have uh, recruiters there. So uh, companies um, come and have tables and they're recruiting for um, jobs and internships. And I just put up our social media. Um, if you are interested in following us to learn more about what we do, uh, the first Twitter one is our program specific. The second one is our department. Um, and then Facebook is, is both the department and the programs. We, they're all on the Facebook page. And we'll conclude the session. Thank you so much again for coming. And again, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. All right, so we will have a great day.